So this is an 8-core Xeon that comes in the base Mac Pro, the infamous one that costs $6,000 if you buy it brand new. But I upgraded this to a 28-core Mac Pro CPU, the one that Apple charges over $7,000 to upgrade, but I did it for, wait, you're not going to believe the cost. So let's get started. So today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're a creative person, somebody who's curious, a lifelong learner, Skillshare is a great way in one place to get different classes in order to just grow as a person, as a creative. If you guys watch me here on YouTube, I do all sorts of tutorials, builds, and likewise on Skillshare, definitely a great place where I've learned how to hone my skills from product photography. Every time I put up a really cool looking computer to product videos, there's a lot of great creators on Skillshare. For example, I've taken the class by YC Imaging and they give you a lot of great filmmaking principles, things that I've applied to this very YouTube channel and Skillshare is a fantastic way to go about doing this. You'll get unlimited access to thousands of classes and you get great feedback from the community and even better news, it's actually really affordable, usually coming in at under $10 a month for a premium membership and the first 1,000 people to go to my link below will get a free trial of their premium membership. That way you can explore. They have so many different categories. Let me know what you guys think down below. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to subscribe and smash that like button. They say every time that you do, I do one less video on NVIDIA GPUs or AMD not being available, and maybe a little more with this guy back here, a Mac Pro. Now, I know what you're saying. Apple is overpriced and this and that. It doesn't perform like a PC. A lot of that is true, but I've actually had a lot of fun upgrading this Mac. And yes, you heard me right upgrading. There's actually a lot of stuff that you can do. This isn't like a, a completely closed off ecosystem or anything like that. I mean, this is a regular Xeon chip, a W3223. The one that I put in there is going to be the 28 core 3275M, a chip that you can get just like if you did on a server or a regular motherboard. So let's talk about why this Mac Pro is a little bit more special and it doesn't just have to do with the price. Now, a little bit of a background on this particular system. I actually got pretty lucky and bought an open box for around $4,000. And now the base specs are actually fairly paltry and I would never recommend anybody buy the base spec of a Mac Pro like this. But on the secondhand market, you can actually find CPUs like this, like the 28 core that I have in there for much cheaper than you can get them from Apple. For example, if you were to configure the 28 core Xeon from Apple on their website, it's gonna be a charge of over $7,000. Now, when this computer came out, that wasn't actually completely terrible because the MSRP of that particular Xeon was around seven something. So Apple was pretty much charging what Intel was charging Apple. So you can't really blame them all the way. Now, a few years after, a lot of these chips have hit sort of the secondhand market and they're considerably cheaper. I mean, a lot of them were taken out from servers and from different things like that. This particular one I was able to get for under $1,600 for the 28 core. So compare that price, 1600 versus $7,000 plus. That is an extremely massive difference. Now, I know what you're also thinking, a Threadripper, a 24 core Threadripper, and I have that in my main PC, 3960X will absolutely destroy this chip for a little bit less cost. And of course, you'd be right if you do equal applications, the Threadripper certainly is gonna be a lot faster for a cheaper cost, a lot more flexible. But the caveat here is if you have Mac OS, the, 24, the 28 core Xeon, and they do also have a 24 core, is gonna be pretty much the fastest Intel processor that you can put in any Mac until Apple sort of does their own M2 or whatever Apple Silicon is gonna be for these Mac Pros. But for now, the 28 core is the most powerful, and in most cases in Mac OS, it's really not that bad at all. Of course, it's not gonna compare to the big thread rippers, but getting it at a considerably cheaper price, if you're using this Mac for things like ProRes RAW or something like that, which does take advantage of the CPU cores, I think it's gonna be pretty much your best option. And that's where we have to talk about why would you get a Mac like this instead of a PC? Now, me, I've always liked using both. They both provide little niceties and little pleasures. For example, this one, I just love upgrading it and I love the design, the MPX modules for the GPUs, not to mention being able to upgrade it so easily. I'm gonna show you guys, basically in under half an hour, I was able to swap out this CPU 
two and put in the 28 core Xeon. It was pretty simple. If you guys have watched Linus Tech Tips do a similar upgrade on this Mac Pro, he went about it in a more difficult way by taking the, the backplate screws off and pretty much taking the entire mechanism off, which is much more difficult. I basically just left the system upright, just unscrewed the, the big uh, heat sink that goes on the CPU, cleaned off the, the old thermal paste, took out the CPU with these little metal retention brackets, put the other one in, held it in place, put the, the little bracket back, and then screwed back in the CPU heat sink. All was done under half an hour with no issues. Of course, you do have to be very careful not to damage any pins or anything like that, as these are really big chips. And no, it's not my hand that's small. Look how big these uh, processors are. You can see they're very large compared to something like a, a regular Intel i7 or i9, or even a, a Ryzen 5950X. They're gonna be smaller than this. Um, these server chips just generally are this large, so it is pretty heavy. You have to be careful when you put it in not to bend any pins, but the results are certainly amazing, and you can get the fastest Mac Pro for about one-tenth or one-sixth the cost than if you did it from Apple. Now, there are certainly some pretty good reasons why Apple uses these particular Xeons. I mean, at the time, it was pretty much the best bet, and I think that they didn't really have any type of deal with AMD to do Threadripper, so pretty much the best CPU that you can get, and it has a lot of PCIe lanes. That's where this is important. It has about 64 PCIe lanes, which is a considerable amount. Basically, that means you can add multiple GPUs, and yes, a lot of programs in macOS will scale with multiple GPUs. For example, Final Cut Pro X, DaVinci Resolve, it does so in Windows as well. Having multiple GPUs will help everything go considerably faster. You can even put an afterburner card in here, which I do. That one specifically accelerates the playback of ProRes and ProRes RAW. If you haven't noticed, a lot of this is going to be based around video editing. I think a lot of maybe film studios and things like that that work with ProRes, which is a pretty popular format with various different cameras, they use this type of machine because it does make the workflow go considerably fast. Now, that's not to say that a really you know nice thread ripper with a davinci resolve on the windows machine isn't just as fast or even faster in many cases the prores of workflow a lot of people are just used to it in mac os and it's certainly very easy to use and definitely something that's used commonly in the type of places that will buy a machine like this now you have to remember this type of mac pro is not really geared at the normal enthusiast or or even sort of the lower end prosumer it's a very expensive machine that you really need to have sort of a workflow in mind Main Mainly it's going to be that ProRes. In a lot of cases, a lot of uh, audio technicians, a lot of uh, music people, they'll use this with logic and things like that because of the very low latency in terms of music production. Now, for other things like, you know, 3D work and, and science and math work, while technically this can kind of do it, I think most people jumped ship already to the PC side a long time ago, and those, and especially the software, are going to be much more capable, most likely on the PC side. So in Mac OS, you're really talking about sort of the video editors that really want to utilize Final Cut Pro X, as well as Logic and, and things like that with music production. Those are going to be pretty much the two main areas. And of course, if you're a bit of an enthusiast, the Mac Pros dating all the way back to 10 or 15 years ago when they first came out, they're definitely really cool to tinker with. Like even this one, you can add regular AMD 6000 series GPUs now with Big Sur 11.4. So I even upgraded the CPU as we mentioned today. So you can definitely do a lot of upgrades. That means it's a system that's going to last a long time. There are people still using 10-year-old Mac Pros, you know, that came out a long time ago. They upgraded them with GPUs, and you can add hard drives. It's very expandable, and that's why I really like working with systems like this. Not to mention that having done a lot of PC custom builds, I can really appreciate the insane amount of build quality and expandability that's in a system like this. Not even my Case Labs case with a Threadripper motherboard has some of the options that something like this can have with the 64 different PCIe lanes and actually having the space to fit everything. So that's definitely very, very interesting. And even in this, I have it completely full with GPUs and hard drives and things of that nature. I just wanted to show you guys, while this has a very small market, it's actually a lot of fun to tinker with as an enthusiast, and you don't have to necessarily break the bank. You can upgrade the CPU for much cheaper than you would get from Apple by getting it uh, elsewhere on the secondhand market. The prices have come down considerably. You can do the same thing with the RAM 
and with the hard drives that you can put in here with the NVMe drives. So it's certainly a very capable machine, very fun to upgrade. And while yes, new from Apple, they're definitely overpriced, especially the base model. If you can find a good deal on the base model and upgrade it yourself with parts that are available on the secondhand market, you can actually build a very capable machine if you're doing things like content creation and things you're actually going to be able to use this for. Of course, comparing it price per spec for a PC, most of the time this will lose in terms of the spec and the performance comparison. So you really have to know your particular workflow and kind of have a little bit of a passion of working with some of these machines. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you like the content, and I'll see you guys on the next video.